Hello, welcome to AR on AR. I'm Adam Rose, and today I'm going to be looking at how to put together a structured training program. Um, it's not quite as simple as you might think. I'm not just going to throw a plan straight in your face. Um, there's some questions to ask before we get into it, but hopefully this will be useful for you, especially for newcomers to adventure racing who want to know where to get started. All right, so if somebody comes up to me and says, you know, what should I do for training? Never done one before. I've got to ask a few questions to narrow down the field. So the first question I'd ask is, how fit is the person? Because it's going to be a big difference recommending training for somebody who's already a triathlete, already does regular training, versus somebody who's a couch potato. They've just heard about adventure racing. Secondly, I'm going to ask, how long is the event? Because training for a six-hour sprint race is surely going to be different for training for an expedition length event. Thirdly, when is the event? If it's just around the corner, that's going to affect the kind of training program compared to something six months down the line or you know, a year down the line. And finally, is the person planning on podiuming at the event? They want to you know, really race hard or are they simply planning to cross the line? Because you know, in a nutshell, if you are planning to do your very first sprint event, it's a you know, six-hour sprint event, you've never done anything, you're coming straight off the couch, I guarantee you, you could do it tomorrow. Why? Because all you have to do is get one trek uh, checkpoint, one bike checkpoint, and if there's paddling, one paddling checkpoint. You could do that probably in half an hour's exercise, and you qualify for the event. So, you know, it's a whole different world if you want to go and do something really long. But, you know... You probably, if you're watching this episode, are fit enough already to take part in an adventure race, a short adventure race, without changing anything that you're currently doing. Okay, now on top of just the regular training, you know, you're running or you're biking, which most people have some background in, uh, maybe it's first, but most people have some experience doing something like that. And not everybody has uh, experience in paddling. So what I'm saying here really is, not only are you training for fitness and for strength and for speed, you're also training for skills the skills you might need to acquire, a particular set of skills. And, um, you know, most people don't really train their paddling as well as they do their biking or their, their running because, you know, you can just pop out the door and go for a run or pop out the door and go for a bike ride. Not everybody owns a boat. Not everybody lives near water. So the, the skill that's most neglected, I would argue, in adventure racing is the paddling set of skills, whether it's kayaking or canoeing or, or, or pack rafting. Um, so you need to get yourself acclimatized to certain skills. Uh, when it comes to ropes, you might need to know how to tie knots, you might need to know how to use via ferrata or abseil safely down a rope, all sorts of things like that. And then, of course, there's navigation. There's so many different skills that you need to get up to, to speed with. And then also you need to train your mental game. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this particular episode because it'll take too long. But just to point out, your mental game is probably the most significant factor in crossing that finish line, especially in an expedition length race. So do not neglect getting yourself mentally tough or developing the grit in order to uh, push yourself harder when things get a little less pleasant. Some people break it down in terms of training into three categories. So they say work on your cardio first, then work on your strength training, and then work on your skills training. It doesn't have to be linear like that, but that's, what, that's how some people you know, compartmentalize things. Or some people might say work on your endurance, uh, work on your strength, work on your skills, work on your mental game. You know, it really doesn't matter how you want to categorize things, but the point is that you need to cover a wide range of aspects. It's not simply going out and pushing yourself as hard as you can physically. You need to work on different uh, aspects of the training throughout your typical week. Okay, now in terms of putting together a training program, how much time are you going to need to train per week? And, you know, people leave busy lives, they've got a job, they've got all the other concerns. So I would say if you're going to do an expedition level event and you simply want to cross the finishing line, you could do that on 10 to 12 hours training a week. Okay, so that includes covering, you know, some trekking and or running, some biking and some paddling, assuming those are your, your core disciplines. And on a daily basis, let's say for Monday to Friday, you'd be doing one or two hours every single day. And then on the weekends, you'd be devoting that time, because you've got more uh, free time, hopefully, to a longer run or a longer bike ride or longer paddling session. So that's just a kind of rough rule of thumb, 10 to 12 hours. If you could afford it, you know, you'd probably want to go 15 to 20 hours, 
but not all of us have that amount of time to spare, especially if you've got a spouse and kids and a busy job and all those kind of things. For a sprint race, yeah, you, you could go and do a sprint race on, on very few hours of training. Obviously, you wouldn't do very well, presumably, if, if you're not used to training, but you know, you five hours a week, you know, some running, some biking, you could go and enter a five hours uh, sprint race and you know, equip yourself pretty well, actually. In terms of a structured training program, um, I'm just gonna cut to the nitty gritty. Uh, this is a book I've recommended before, you know, The Runner's World Guide to Adventure Racing, written by Ian Adamson. It's not the only book out there, but Ian Adamson, world champion adventure racer for many years, and he put together in this book a number of training programs, which I'm gonna put up on the screen here. I'm not going to pick them apart in, in, in fine detail, but they look at the training that you typically do for a short sprint event. First of all, as a recreational racer, just wanna cross the finish line, versus a competitive racer who you know, is really training, uh, pushing themselves hard. And then the same idea when you come to a longer event, um, he looks at that as a, like a weekend event, so that's probably 48 hours, 24, 48 hours, 36 hours. Um, and then uh, in terms of an expedition length event. This is his breakdown for four weeks worth of preparation for a sprint race, so that's really short, you know, it could even be five, six hours, and a recreational athlete. Now, looking at the first table, I've just color coded in terms of disciplines, so you can see in those four weeks, every single week includes some running, you know, running every day, or paddling every day, or biking every day, or in yellow over there you can see specialized, that just means skills that don't fit into all the other categories. So he's doing one discipline per day, doesn't say how long, but you know, it could just be an hour per day. Um, and then as it approaches the race, it includes rest, and then obviously there's rest on either side of the race. Now that's what you have in, the, in this table at the top, but in the table at the bottom, you have, you know, the format that's being used. So in his case, every Monday is recovery. So going back to the top table, you've got to run, bike, paddle, and specialized uh, on the Mondays, but there's recovery sessions. So obviously that's taking it easy. And you can see speed, he incorporates one speed session a week, one for each discipline. And then endurance, you know, that forms the, you can see there's green all over the thing. So there's a lot of green because endurance is, you know, critical for any adventure race. And then he includes some uh, skill. So practicing whatever techniques that you want to become proficient at and some strength. So that's a very basic breakdown for a recreational athlete. If we look at a competitive athlete training for a, a sprint race, they're going to take longer in their preparation because they're serious uh, competitors. So there we've got six weeks worth of prep rather than just four weeks. They want to get on the podium. Um, you've got some days with multiple disciplines, so a run and a paddle on one day or a bike and a run on a single day. So maybe you'd you do that run before you go to work and then when you come home in the evening you do a bike session when you come home but again if you build that into your commute it's not going to be that difficult to achieve um, so you know it's kind of spread out evenly the amount of biking versus the amount of running and the, the paddling is kind of evenly distributed and again if you look at the table at the bottom every day on every monday is his recovery day and then there's a lot of green so you've got endurance sessions almost every single uh, of the remaining six days um, and you've got more speed work, you've got more skills being practiced. Um, but, you know, it gives you an idea of how you could uh, structure a more serious commitment to racing. And then moving over to this third set, uh, this is looking at two months worth of preparation for a 48-hour race. Okay, so again, uh, during the week, because there's more amount of training, there's longer preparation, um, it's only doing one session per day, so running or biking or paddling. And then on the weekends, you see these brick sessions where you have multiple sessions on the Saturday and on Sunday. You notice there's quite a bit of rest that starts to creep in, you know, usually at least one full rest day per week. And if we look at the intensity, um, so uh, again, every Monday, not only are every, is every Monday a recovery day, but here on weeks four and five, he's including some recovery in the middle of those two months. So it's periodization. So, you know, you have an intense period of training and then you slacken off for a week or two and then you get back on uh, more intense training and slacking off just before the event itself. And he recommends including a sprint race, you know, halfway through. So after the first month, take part in some intense sprint race. And then obviously it's all building up to the longer race at the end of the two months. And then finally we get on to, you know, 
If you're a competitive athlete training for that 48 hour race, you again gonna require even more commitment. So here we're looking at 12 weeks worth of training to do really well podium level. Um, and that's, that's kind of lifestyle adventure race training. It's not that you're purely training for an event. You know, typically a competitive athlete is gonna uh, race multiple times in a year and multiple events that, you know, they're trying to hit the podium every single one. So what it says here, three months for 48 hour race, that if you're doing four races in a year, it's kind of very, very reasonable for a competitive athlete. You know, it's just non-stop training year in, year out. Anyway, again, we've got kind of training one discipline a day, um, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, maybe Thursdays, you've got multiple disciplines, so brick sessions. On the weekends, you could have even four disciplines in a single day there on week five. You can see a run and a bike and a paddle and some sort of specialized skill. And then, you know, every Sunday you've got some rest. Um, and at the bottom, again, we can see recoveries on Monday. You've got speed session in the beginning part of the week, skill sessions in the latter part of, the, of each week, and endurance everywhere. Okay, so on a single day, you might have speed for one discipline and endurance for another discipline. Ultimately, if you were saying, well, this is 48 hour race, how do I train for an expedition length race? Well, you're gonna make each session longer because obviously in the expedition itself, you're gonna be exercising for longer. So longer sessions, lower intensity for each session, and you increase the amount of recovery time. So you'd see more of that yellow um, creeping through. Um, you don't wanna break your body in training for an expedition length event. All right, so just to wrap it up with a few points, um, if you're looking for somebody to formally train you, there are some training programs out there, and a name that sometimes gets bandied around is Jen Sega. Don't know, never met her, but she has been recommended. So jensega.com. Um, she structures training programs for uh, adventure races in particular, and she is an adventure racer, so obviously she has experience in that. And, you know, adventure racing isn't simply about the event. It's not about PBs. You know, there is no PB, uh, personal best, in an adventure race because every single adventure race is different. So, you know, adventure, in essence, is the more important part, I would argue, of adventure racing. As you get older, you're not going to be able to go as fast, so you may as well enjoy the adventure. But adventure should be a lifestyle. So personally, if I'm not training for a specific event, I will still be going out hiking. I will still be trekking. I will still be going in the mountains and rock climbing and paddling. And in fact, the training itself can be as enjoyable as the adventure races themselves. If you use a little bit of creativity, plot some points on a map and put together your own adventures. And that can be great training, of course, because you learn so much doing those things compared to just going out and doing you know, regular speed sessions and just going for regular bike rides every day. Going out and having an adventure will throw the unexpected at you and that is a huge part of what adventure racing is. And have fun, really, have fun. Because uh, you know, regardless of how many events you participate in, adventure racing is about exploration and discovery and all those kind of things. And that should form a core part of your training, not just of your racing. Okay, so that was an example of you know, one approach to a structured training program. Remember, Ian Adamson was a pretty serious competitor. So even his recreational program that he recommended there, they're pretty intense in themselves. Not all sprint race competitors will go in at quite an intensity like that. Uh, you need to find what works for you. You need to find out literally by racing how fit you are, how well you cope with things. And you know, hopefully over not just one season, but over a number of years, you'll build up your, your fitness base and your endurance and your experience. And you know, you'll be able to see your progress and maybe hit the podium. Okay, I hope this is useful. See you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.